topic. He also did an awesome job on Sunday with the sermon concerning how do we become resilient as believers in Christ, right? And so one way, and uh, whenever you're ready, uh, Ms. McLean, you can go ahead and um, start the PowerPoint presentation. So he wanted me to do both, um, talk a little bit about strategies of, that we can utilize to help us elevate our emotions, as well as talk about the biblical perspective about um, some of the, what the Bible says about our emotions, right? And so, um, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. We're going to start off tonight with that. Um, strategies for emotional well-being is what I'll be sharing with you. And we have a few activities um, to begin. Of course, I'm going to review our, our learning intentions to make it a lot easier for you to follow. I have some five folders that are coming out. We have a study guide. That's what we'll be going through. Um, as adult learners, uh, when you're teaching adult learners or in front of adult learners, you have to have activities. I promise you they won't be overwhelming, <laughs> but it helps guide us through. So um, tonight, at first, we're going to be focusing on strategies for emotional well-being. And um, next slide, please. So our learning intentions for tonight, um, the when you leave here, um, hopefully, you would have learned strategies to reduce the impact of trauma, learn emotional monitoring strategies to develop self-awareness, learn strategies to increase emotional intelligence, and learn strategies to improve positive intelligence quotient. And some of the topics that I'm going to be sharing tonight will be a review for some and might be introduction for others if you have not participated before. So when we talk about emotional well-being, um, we talk about the mental health continuum. So the mental health continuum, um, just a quick brief overview. Um, in the district, we share uh, whenever we train, when we work with students, when we work with teachers, when we work with all type of staff members, to remind them that it's okay to be okay, it's okay not to be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. So on your journey through life, at some point, you're gonna, you're gonna fall on that mental health continuum. You're either gonna be okay, um, you're either gonna need some assistance, some support, or somebody else might have to step in for you, which I play many times in my role with the crisis intervention piece. But on the mental health continuum, it's not just about uh, intervening during mental health crisis, but it's maintaining where you are, if you're okay, preventative, right? And also intervention if you do need some assistance. Next slide, please. So I know a lot of times we talk about trauma and people say, well, I have not been traumatized. That Nothing crazy ever happened to me. But believe it or not, every day we are exposed to secondary trauma, whether it's to the news, whether it's some not so good news from a family, friend, loved one. That's secondary trauma, all right? When we navigate, it's not easy navigating the complexities of this human experience, right? So what's the definition of trauma? So trauma refers to an event, could be a series of events or a set of circumstances that is experienced by an individual as it could be physically, it could be emotionally harmful or life-threatening that has lasting adverse effects. So when you hear that bad news, if you're still thinking about it later, a day later, two days later, you have been exposed to secondary trauma. And all of us um, actually, whether or not we experience it individually, we just came out of a pandemic. That's considered secondary trauma if you didn't experience it firsthand. So in order to be resilient, like Pastor spoke about on Sunday, one way to be able to overcome and to protect herself from trauma, whether it is secondary trauma or not, is to improve our emotional intelligence. And so tonight we're going to talk about some strategies and some activities to do that. So in the district, we have a signature practice. We always start with a welcoming ritual, which means we find a way to help each other get ready to learn or to be present. And then we always end with optimistic closure in the end, because you always want to leave on a good note. So the welcoming ritual tonight, the first one actually is from one of the examples I shared before previously when we were working on strategies to improve um, or emotional intelligence is the mindfulness eye activity. And you can go to the next slide, Mr. Quinn. And what I'm gonna ask you to do, we have a beautiful sanctuary here. I don't know if you ever pay attention to it or not, but in, 
into, in, whenever you're working on improving your positive, your positive intelligence IQ, you have to make sure you're in tune with your five senses. And all it takes is 10 seconds, we spoke about it before for those who participate, to find an object, focus on it for about 10 seconds. And so tonight we're gonna do a mindful, uh, mindful eyes activity just to get us ready to hear the information I'm gonna be sharing. And what you're doing is you're treating the parts of your brain that needs to focus and concentrate to focus and concentrate. So I want you to look around the sanctuary and I want you to find an object something that you probably haven't paid attention to in a while or you've never paid attention to. And I want you to look at the object, notice the colors of the object, notice the shape, if there's a light bouncing off of it, if there's shadows, and I'm gonna time you, okay? If you're also watching this at home, you can do the same thing. Look around the room, wherever you are. You're gonna find an object, and for 10 seconds, you're gonna focus on that object. Notice the colors, the shape, if there are lights bouncing off, if there's shadows, and go. That's 10 seconds. And we shared before, um, when I shared before in previous sessions, that whenever you're engaging with these strategies, all you need is 10 seconds to actually increase your intelligence and your intelligence and your emotional IQ, which help you to become more resilient. It might seem so simple, it might seem so basic, but it works. And these are strategies that we've been using, that scientists use, doctors use, we're all using them, practitioners, therapists. And so the one that we just did had to do with your sense of sight. So would anyone like to share um, what object you noticed in the church you've never noticed before and what you shared, um, what you noticed about it? Do we have any mics to help us tonight with anyone who is participating? Thank you, Deacon Parker. He's on his way. I noticed that flag. Um, I noticed that it's red and blue. And I noticed that it's shaped like a rectangle, almost. Like a sphere. Thank you for sharing. She noticed the flag in the corner. How many of you have noticed the flag while you're in church? Have you ever noticed the flag before? Johnny Moore, I happen to notice the second window up there, shape of a cross with its multiple colors there. The stained, stained glass stained window? Stained glass one, yeah. Yes. With the, the cross in it, I had never paid attention, I guess. I, I just, that's the thing that I noticed to focus on that I was my eye level. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Has anyone ever noticed the stained glass windows that we have here? how beautiful they are and how they're all unique. I noticed the first stained glass window there, beautiful red colors and yellow and blue. And what I notice is I'm, I'm not quite sure what it depicts. I see the yellow uh, kind of hair parallel, uh, but I don't know, but it drew my attention. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else would like to share? Any answers? <laughs> That's all you're doing. The brain, you don't even have to try to figure it out. Just notice it. And the brain enjoys art. So I'm going to get there soon about newer arts. But this is important because guess what? I do this for a living. And everything they're recommending, we have it right here every time we're in church for us to do to improve our emotional intelligence. I focused on the second window over to the, um, what direction is that, Jesus? North side. It looked like it has Christmas lights in, a, in the tubes crossing over, and then it has the grapevines in, uh, coming down, like it's a celebration of birth. Huh? 
Minister, Minister Wright says she think it's wheat. This is an orange. Yes. Yes, it appears as bulbs for you, Christmas lights, yes. Hey, I just got new glasses today, okay. <laughs> but that's your interpretation of it, that's okay. That's your interpretation. That's what you notice. Robin? I also Nicholas noticed yeah. the second window at the top and what it appears to be that there is sun and rain. So I interpret that sometimes as a Christian, what I'm getting from mm -hmm. it. There are going to be sunny days, but there are also going to be cloudy, rainy days. But the cross is always there. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, everyone. And there's a couple more hands. I noticed the purple butterfly, the first stained glass window. Okay. But what drew my attention is the two yellow triangles okay. on, the, on the butterfly. Awesome. New beginnings. Right? And butterfly represents transformation too, right? Symbolic. We have a lot of beautiful symbols here that help us to encourage us, you know, realize it. Reverend Hay? I just happened to look up at uh, the mission statement and just above the above that and, and white letters, it was hard for me to pick up, but I think it says our. Yeah. And our mission, I, I had never noticed that word above the word mission. And then I saw the three uh, words in bold, white, up, in, and out. So I guess there's uh, supposed to be some emphasis placed on that. Shape of it is rectangle, of course. And then on the bottom it has the, uh, the, the city and the telephone number, et cetera. I just, just never really paid attention to that. Thank you for sharing. I have the window on the uh, north side also, the bottom one. You see the ladder going up. That yes. made me think of we're climbing Jacob's ladder. Yes. And what's below that? You notice? The cross and the three nails. Right? We're soldiers off the cross. Remember that song? We're climbing Jacob's ladder. Uh huh. Soldiers off the cross, yes. Nice. <laughs> I noticed, I was staring at the uh, exit exit sign. The exit sign? Yeah, I was yes. staring at that. Okay. Thank you for sharing. So, that was actually, go ahead, Brother Lee. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is, a <clears throat> excuse me. This is a little history. There is a book. We can't find it here at the church, but each one of these wonders is a story in the Bible. Wow. And we tried to get a, 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 a program set up so 15 minutes every Sunday, you will know which wonder has what story. That's awesome. Now, it's... It's a book somewhere around this church that has all those stories in it, mm -hmm. and it should be a project that uh, a good Christian should uh, <laughs> take take upon themselves to do it, you know. <laughs> but I remember, I remember it, it. The book came from the same church that has the same diagram. This one in West Palm Beach, and. Uh, but it's a book here, and uh, that'll be a good project for. That is awesome. Not Thank you for sharing that. Because you notice how your brothers and sisters started noticing the stained glass windows, right? A lot of people went straight to the stained glass windows. Uh, I, can I just say this? Mm -hmm. You're right. This is one of five that have the artists that get these glass, these stained glass. And when Blake and I were getting married, they were doing a tour of all the churches, but they couldn't tour this one because it was our wedding. Okay. And one of the ladies that was on the tour, she was coming to the wedding, so she was able to see these stained glass windows. So it is historical, 
and it's in Palm Beach County, but there are, I think, five churches that have these stained glass windows in it. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> we have one more person before we move on. Uh, for me, stained glass represents, uh, you know, the cross, Jesus Christ, so that's our flesh. And you notice how you got the black behind it? That's where we started. Each time we come to church, we should be able to be like, that's a pogo stick. And if you look right to the uh, left, that look like a scepter. And for me, the lightning is uh, <coughs> when I uh, praise God in here, and what the, that sun represents is that his glory is coming out of us, but it's got to shine down in us and come up. Thank you for sharing. And so thank you all so much for the journey we went on. Um, very fulfilling tonight. Got a little bit more than I was expecting, which is awesome, right? Got a little history. But the arts, um, neural arts, I'm going to touch on it a little bit later on. It helps us no matter where we are on the mental health continuum. If you're diagnosed with a mental health illness, if you're dealing with chronic pain, if you're, you just name it, if you're trying to help your child learn how to read, how to relax, introducing them to the arts alone, help them flourish. And so I'm gonna touch on that a little bit, you know, gonna go through some things tonight. We have a couple more weeks, we're coming back. Um, but I wanted to bring back another way for us to continue to work on our emotional well-being is to track yourself and to develop, um, develop self-awareness. The more self-aware you are, like Pastor talked about on Sunday, we need to know our limitations. It's not about how somebody else is feeling, it's about what you're feeling, what you can handle at the moment. So being able to track yourself, and I shared this one of these tools before. The next slide, please, um, Mr. Quinn. The one that says monitoring your emotions. So in your file folder, I believe all the handouts went out, correct? Not yet? Okay, so the one that says color your heart. So each of you either got a pack of marker um, or a pack of crayons. And if anybody need pens or writing tools, I have some pens in that container that had the markers. So this is one way um, to track. Whether you're dealing with grief or exposed to trauma, like I say, all of us are exposed to secondary trauma on a daily basis. And you don't even know what's going on until you realize later on you're, you feel kind of off. You're like, why do I feel off today? What's wrong? I don't understand. I woke up just fine you probably got exposed to some secondary trauma, whether it's through the news, whether it's through work, whether it's through on the way to work, you got exposed. And so it's also very important for you to be able to continue to track yourself. So I have plenty of extra copies of these. We did it before. I'm gonna give you about five minutes for those who have never done it. And if you've done it, you repeat this several times. You just don't do it one time and done. So I have extra copies and for anybody who wanna work on start tracking themselves, you can just always ask me for a copy and I'll provide a copy. I'll leave, leave copies also in the front office. All you do is think of the five emotions that you've been experiencing the most lately and write them down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna time about five minutes for this one. And if you're finished, I'll check back in a little bit because if you're fast, then that's fine. I'll check to see if you're ready. Because this is very important for you to do. And like pastors say, you know, we have to commit to doing the work. Right? But can I tell you that once you do the work, it becomes easier because it becomes a part of you now. And you don't even have to probably use the paper anymore. You can just say to yourself, you know what? What did I get exposed to today? And you'll take some time out just to breathe. Because sometimes just breathing helps you to overcome. Because you have to trigger your brain. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But the prefrontal cortex, right? Which is the front part of your brain. It's in charge of your ability to think clearly. Your ability to communicate and your ability to connect with others. But guess what? When you've been exposed to trauma, whether it's intentional or secondary, it shuts down. And then it takes away your ability to think clearly, your ability to connect, and it, it, it makes you wanna go into protection and safety mode, and you put out boundaries and barriers. And so if you never come out of that state, you kinda stay in that for a while, and you wonder why all of a sudden you're not feeling connected to people. So it's so important to track, be able to track yourself to see what's happening, why do I feel different, and do an intervention right away. And I'm gonna go over a couple of them later on what they are. So this is one of those activities. And so research, research actually shows, like your brain is, um, imagine your brain being, being like a, a highway. Like look, picture the world, you know how the world looks, the round circle of the world, and there are bridges and highways crossing it. Well that's kind of what's going on in the mind. 
So there's plenty of neurons that are waiting to hear from you, and they're hearing from you through your senses, your five senses. So your five senses are governing how you react and how you react emotionally based on what they're experiencing. So whatever you're seeing, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're smelling, all of that triggers like the prefrontal cortex to either, hey, enjoy, or hey, hide. Hi, hey, go hide, back up, don't connect, go into safety, you're in trouble. Because your brain is so powerful, it doesn't know when you're actually being engaged in something or if you're just imagining it. And so that's why even the word, I look and I laugh because I'm working sometimes and all the solutions they're given, there's a Bible verse for it. You know, and the Bible say, whatever things are pure, whatever things are honest, good report. Think of those things. I get it now. It keeps your prefrontal cortex open. It, it makes so much sense. And so um, this is one way to track. You write down the five emotions that you're feeling. You d whatever you're feeling, it's you, because you're tracking yourself. So think of the five emotions you felt this week and just write them down. Could be good, could be bad, doesn't matter. It's your emotions, you felt them, and you felt them for a reason. Yes. Reverend Hay, you had something to say? I forgot. Okay, you can go ahead and put it up, um, please, Quinn. Yes, so here's what happened. You can choose your colors. The colors don't have to have anybody else's meaning, but your meaning. Like red doesn't even have to mean that you're angry. It could mean that you're in love or something, I don't know. So red doesn't have to, there's no meaning to the colors. You choose your own color scheme. You write down the five emotions. You create your own code for it. And then you color in your heart to see which one took up the most space this week, right? So that one was, um, that's there. It said worried, hopeful, angry, sad, happy. So that's an example. But what are the emotions you felt this week? Right? And so you can pick whatever emotions because you're tracking yourself. So that's one way to, in, to improve your emotional intelligence, right? And your, intel your emotional IQ. Believe it or not, growing up a lot of times, because I was one of those gifted kids, but you have to be well-rounded even if you're gifted, right? So a lot of times we talk about IQ and we were just focusing on IQ. But IQ is not the only answer. The most successful people in the world have a high emotional intelligence IQ, meaning they know how to self-regulate. They track themselves. They pay attention to their heartbeat, their heart rate, how they're feeling, and they reflect on it. They just don't ignore it. See, the Lord God, he is so amazing, and our body is was, so cre was created so... I don't even know what to say. I'm in awe because I know both sides. I know the spiritual side and then I know the book side, right? And so the Lord, with his divine intelligence, created us that we actually could self-heal ourselves in so many ways, right? He gave us everything we, ne we needed for prevention and he also gave us the word to back it up. And so the body is um, it's so intuitive that if you have some of these strategies in place as prevention, you probably would never face crisis because you have a way of, of listening to yourself and dealing with it as soon as it comes up. Whenever you don't, that's what leads to depression. And later on, I'll go into that um, another time because there's um, a scientific piece of it about the actual body itself. And tonight, I'm just sharing the strategy part. But it's important for you to know that piece so you can know how your brain and your heart are working together with your five senses. So your heart, and your brain reacts through what you're taking in through your five senses. So if you witness something, your heart start racing, your, your eyes saw that, right? If something hit you or something fell on your toe, your body felt that, right? So, and your mind's like, ah, you know, run, move, whatever it is. Whatever happened before that looks like it's about to happen again, your brain's like, hey, remember. So your senses are actually speaking to the brain, speaking to the heart, okay? The next one, um, so you can do that, and you can do that multiple times. You just have to do it one and done. The next one that's great for monitoring your emotions, um, the one that says monitoring your emotions, Mr. Quinn. Go back, go back. Keep going back, keep going, right there. The next one. There you go, thank you. Okay, so does everybody have this tool? Okay, so that's the next tool. So this is called a mood thermometer, right? So you can do the color of your heart, or you can check in with a mood thermometer. So those are really two good tools that you can use to check in on yourself. And you should check in on yourself weekly, right? 
Um, we have to be intentional about it. Um, well, like Pastor say, we have to be willing to do the work. But once you do the work, like I say, eventually becomes a part of you. So the mood thermometer helps you also to develop self-awareness because you have to self-regulate yourself. Nobody else can regulate you. You have to be able to regulate yourself. And, you know, we're focusing on praying and we're focusing on unity um, this week. And I'm telling you, when you're self-regulated, you're able to better navigate the complexity of this human experience that we face every single day and be able to better deal with each other. Um, it keeps your prefrontal cortex open. You're able to connect with others. It softens those boundaries and those walls that we put up of trust and mistrust. Because when we're exposed to trauma, it makes us put up these walls and boundaries that shut others out. But in order for us to function and flourish as a human being, we have to stay connected. Being connected is one of those main ingredients in order to flourish in life. And for us to have a well-rounded life, we have to stay connected to others, right? You can choose your own circle, but we don't want to be in isolation, all right? Isolation doesn't lead to anything good but depression, and it's not normal for us to want to be alone. So if we're going through that, we need to do some work and just tap into some of these strategies. And once in a while, we go there based on where we are currently on the mental health continuum. And it's okay. Like I said before, it's okay to be okay. It's okay not to be okay at times, and it's okay to ask for help. Because maybe you don't know what tools to use, then you could always reach out and say, hey, I'm not feeling myself this week, and I'm not sure why. And if you have somebody great that you can speak to that you can trust, you know, they'll probably know to ask you those questions. Well, what happened this week? Did anything different happen? Did you receive a call? Did you receive any news? Did you get some bad news? And some of us, we kind of do that naturally. How are you doing? You're not feeling like yourself, right? So with this mood um, thermometer, you just basically, um, like for the first one says, happy, and then it's either not happy, happy, or very happy. The next one says, not sad, sad, or very sad on top. So just checking in with yourself, how you feeling? Am I angry? Am I not angry this week? Am I angry? Am I very angry? Um, am I not worried? Am I worried this week? Am I very worried? Um, the next one says, very, what does it say? Is it up there? Worn out? Yeah. Very worn out, not worn out. Yeah. Very annoyed, not annoyed, right? So that's another way to monitor, too. It's just good to check in with yourself to see how you're doing. You're like, hey, I'm pretty good this week. I had a great week. And that's all right. Because it's okay to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. All right? And so um, does everybody have their study guide already? Yes? The one that says study guide? Strategies for emotional well-being training slash the Bible study guide? Okay, awesome, because that's that way you could drop down your little reflection notes. See, I got some little spaces down there that says reflection notes. So where it says reflection notes, whenever you have that little aha moment or something stand out that you love, um, you might hear from me or one of your brothers and sisters in Christ here, you can jot it down for memory. So the next thing is a self-care assessment activity, because this is all about you, all right? And it doesn't take that long, believe it or not, does everybody have a self-care assessment? Yes? Go ahead. Okay, so did any, well, the, the two monitoring tools that I gave you are personal, so unless you wanted to share out about it, you can, but that's a personal monitoring tool, so I just wanted you to learn how to use it, and so even with the thermometer, you just will be coloring where you are on the thermometer. So those are personal, like individual, personal, don't have to share it out loud, but if you notice any change, if you did it before with us, and if you notice any change, you would like to share it, you're welcome to do that. But those are two private personal tools that you could always request from me if you'd like to have extra copies so you can check in with yourself once in a while. Any questions about that? 
Okay. So in order for us, like I say, to increase your emotion, emotional intelligence, you have to make sure you, that you know you. Okay? And so this helps you. So these are the areas um, on the self-care assessment. If you take a look at it, I'm give you about five minutes or so um, just to read through. And it's something you can look at too personally because this is for self, right? Now, at, afterwards, I might ask a few of you if you noted something there that you never thought about doing that you thought was important that you would consider, or you can also add to the list. So these are the area that you need to be mindful in. So it says self-care assessment, and you can leave that up to um, Mr. Quinn so they can know what they're working on. Does everybody have the self-care assessment? Okay, so there's a scale there, right? And it says, never occurred to me before to think about that item. I never do this. I barely or rarely do this. I do this okay or occasionally, or I do this very well. So in order for you to make sure that you're practicing the strategies to, uh, or skills to help you maintain your emotional intelligence, it's important that you focus on some physical self-care some psychological self-care, emotional self-care, spiritual self-care, relationship self-care, workplace or professional self-care, overall balance, of course, you have a balance between work, um, play, home, church, etc. Your overall balance and any other areas that you believe it's important to you. So what you basically would do as you go through these areas, you rate it of how you are currently, how are you currently doing in these areas on a scale of zero to three, all right? And these are very, very important areas in which we need to focus on and pay attention to in order for us to flourish, in order for us to have the best possible life that the Lord wants for us, right? It's his will for us to do well Okay, it's his will for us to enjoy life and to come together in unity and, and fellowship and have the ability to do it in peace and have the ability to enjoy your family, friends, loved ones, your brothers and sisters in Christ when you're, when you're engaging together and you're collaborating together and working together. So these areas, like I said, the body is um, designed by God to flourish. When we take care of all these areas, we flourish and we are better able to work together in unity. And um, just wanted to share that. So this is another tool. So I'm sharing tonight some tools that you can use to help you focus on developing your emotional. Because our goal this year, this is a year of elevation, right? And so pastor declared all the different areas that the Lord laid on his heart that he would like for us to work on elevating ourselves in. So this month is elevating our emotions. And these are amazing tools that can do the work, yes. I am not gonna diagnose you, I'm not here to do that. Time and place for everything. The Lord also went off in the garden. You said sometimes, you didn't say all the time. Sometimes it's okay, we need that. Yes. You said sometimes. That's fine. It's just my own me time. That's fine. We need me time. So that's what this is about. This is showing you whether or not you're actually taking out that me time too. Right? Are we eating regularly? If you don't eat regularly, guess what? You're not going to be strong. It's going to affect your energy for the day, which will affect your mood for the day. It's like one thing. It's like a domino effect. Right? It's okay to take time out for yourself. You have to do self-care. You have to do me time. Right? For people who take time out, you enjoy other people's company better when you come back. You do. So it's okay, sis. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> All right? It's true. And it's okay. Thank you for asking. It feels uncomfortable to say that out loud. Okay? Yes. That's a perfect oh, answer right there, great. see? Now, I was just saying, uh, so you can hear me, on the first page on the mm -hmm. psychological self-care, number three from the top, 
that make time for self-reflection. Yes, we have to do that. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments about this one, this assessment? What's something you notice? Go ahead, Brother Nix. Point to make sure that you're all threes are you're balanced or I mean there's a lot yes. of things here there's a lot of things there so yeah. those are areas so those are some of the things right make time away for telephone emails and internet yes so so is that a good or bad Social media can be good and social media can be bad. It's right. a balance, because when right. I train about mental health, for others who are by themselves, don't have family, it's a great connecting tool right. for them to be a part of a group of people with similar interests. So everything is always about moderation. Okay, but it should be at least one? It's, it's whatever. It's These are examples of things that help you to develop care in those areas. So um, master your care. So some things might be there. You could even add your own that falls in that. So there's no right or wrong answer, but these are examples. Because a lot of people, believe it or not, I train all the time. A lot of people have no idea where to start. And so um, these are examples, but you can also have your own personal preference. Because like I say, this is your personal thing. Where it says other, you can even write in something that you're doing that works for you. But these are examples of things you can Right? Things you can do. Any other questions about that? Please? Okay. So, but those are the areas in which you should be having concern in, though, and making sure that you're doing something because your body functions based off these areas appropriately. The mind, the heart communicates. Like I said, everything we experience is through our five senses. And when any of these areas are out of order, your body will start letting you know. And you start having some signs and some symptoms, and sometimes we don't know what's going on. But like I said, um, we're exposed to secondary trauma all the time. And so the, any questions about the self-assessment? Just sharing some tools, because that's what I do, all right? So it's important to be able to share these tools, because we can sit here, we can talk, and we can talk. But if the person have nothing to go back with and to hold on to and anything concrete, it's like, it could just win in one ear out the other. And so that's why I share these tools. And even as adult learners, interacting and talking and writing, it's also doing something to your brain too. And with the neuro arts, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as I get there. But the follow-up sheet, um, Brother Nix, um, you don't even have to do all of them, right? So my maintenance self-care plan worksheet. This is the next item that goes along with that assessment. So once you go through your lists, you can basically write down your current practice. If you saw something there, that's your current practice. You can write it down. And then your new practice. If you saw something on the list that you like or love and you think, hey, I can incorporate that, this sheet follow up behind that sheet and you can say, hey, I'm gonna start trying that activity. So you don't have to overwhelm yourself. So there's options for you to see and then you can choose what works for you, right? Because you're doing, this is a personal thing. And we have to start to realize if we're not doing it already, it's our responsibility to help each other, um, to help yourself to self-regulate. And somebody else is, might not always want to come behind you. I know when we come to church, the pastor does it, he encourages us. But sometimes you got to encourage yourself, like the songs say, right? And so we have to be intentional about us our emotions, being self-regulated, our emotional um, intelligence, right? Increasing that is our, part of our responsibility. So whenever you have some time, you could um, take some time out to really consider it. What, is, what on here did they mention that I'm already doing? Yes. With the maintenance? Okay. Brother Quinn, could you leave that last slide up, please? My maintenance self-care plan worksheet. Yes. So this basically, and I have that picture there on purpose because planning is important. And I'm telling you, once you start doing this, it's gonna become like automatic for you and you don't always have to pull out the sheet because it becomes a habit. So planning, it helps you to control your emotions, of course. Helps you to organize yourself, 
And it's, it's just, it's a good thing to have. And for those of us who are leading and for those of us who are in charge and are always exposed to secondary trauma on a daily basis, this is very helpful for you to have your plan in place. I support 60 schools, six zero. So I have two older parents that I'm also taking turns with my siblings to watch, 80s, near 80s. So when I'm not at work, I'm still working. So I have to have a plan. I have to take time out. I have a therapist I talk to every week. I have to. I see crisis and hear crisis news every single day. And they're intense situations. So I, I'm not telling you and sharing with you something that I am also not practicing, but I am practicing. And I'm utilizing these strategies. And that's what keeps me in my job. I love what I do. It's intense. I'm great at it. But it also comes with a lot of trauma. But, you know, the Lord has blessed me to be able to deal with it because I have the proper tools in place. And so just sharing with you um, strategies that I know do work. I've worked with the students, families, and staff members I support, and myself. So just wanted to share that out also. And so this is a great follow-up activity for that. Next slide, please. OK. So I spoke about positive intelligence IQ, also known as PQ, um, before. And I did several activities about it. So PQ rep exercises utilizes your five senses, right? This helps to improve your emotional intelligence, like I said. And so with that being said, all you do is take 10 seconds out to utilize your senses. That's it. So another strategy. And you can write that down, I think, on your paper. I have sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste. It should be in your study guide. In your study guide, I just left the, some little notes so you can know what they are. It's your five senses. All right? So the first activity I did was an example of a PQ rep where we were looking around for 10 seconds at an object. Do the same thing. Listen for 10 seconds. Smell something for 10 seconds, whether it's uh, a scented candle or scented lotion, um, aroma, whatever it is. Um, those, those oils, we know those oils that we, we love, right? That's it. Rubbing your fingers together, run, rubbing your palms together, just feeling your fingertips, wiggling your toes in your shoes for touch, 10 seconds. Popping a mint or a piece of gum in your mouth if you're feeling anxious, right? All those are simple exercises that you can do without nobody know you're doing it for 10 seconds. And that also helps your brain to relax, helps your body to relax, your heart to relax, and helps to improve your emotional intelligence because you are self-regulating. Next slide. Yes. I take I take yoga at least like four times a week. That would that go under the PQ? You can, you can if you want to. And you can do um that can go under your physical too, where the physical is on your other sheet, the self awareness assessment. That could be your other suit and the maintenance sheet. You can write it on your maintenance sheet too. Okay. Right. Okay. Other strategies to increase emotional intelligence. Knowing how to self-regulate with the strategies that I've been sharing with you. Knowing your limitations. Pastors preach about that on Sunday. Did a great job. I won't have to repeat that. Engaging in the arts like we did today. Right? So the newer arts, drawing, painting, dancing, um, you name it, writing, being in nature is considered newer arts too. All right? Newer aesthetics the scenery in nature, right? And so research has shown that 20 minutes alone of being in nature give you the same effect as 20 minutes of meditation. Same exact effect. So that's why I'm saying engaging in the arts for at least 20 minutes give you the same effect as meditating, being in nature, dancing. So that's why I say choose what works for you. All of that stimulates the brain. The brain loves it. It releases all the feel-good chemicals that actually send out healing to the body. And scientists, surgeons, they all are using sound waves to do like important surgery, like heart surgery. They started realizing when they have music on, they have actually seen in the lab where the healthy cells move across the body to the unhealthy cell to repair the area. So it is that powerful. 
And you know, when pastors talk about it on Sunday, like come in here, you don't realize you're actually having therapy. It's true. Everything the world talks about when we come to church, we're experiencing it. And science says just being engaged in the arts, whether just watching the arts at least two times a year, improve your life expectancy. And in, in just two times, just two exposure a year. And we come here how many times a week? Several times, right? Isn't that amazing though? So everything, so now the psychologist, the doctor, they're prescribing the arts as medicine because a lot of people are getting addicted, right? We have a lot of opioid addiction going on right now. So when they come in, they're realizing, oh, they're being anxious. It's anxiety. And they're prescribing the art to go walk in nature for at least 20 minutes. Yes. One of the things that I have experienced is when I would be getting the CAT scans or MRIs for different issues that I had, the technicians would come over to me and say, Mr. Carey George, what kind of music do you like? Before they would do the, the, the scans. Yes. And so I'm like, well, what, what do you got? You know, that's mm -hmm. And so then they would customize the music, put you on headphones while you're having this test done to relax you so that the test can be successful so they can get the right results. Yes. And I, I was really surprised at that. And they said, no, it, the reason we ask is we want the person to be comfortable and the music soothes them. Yes. Yes. And glory to God, because I know your journey. You're doing well. You look amazing. Okay? And so for individuals who've experienced stroke, they use that to help them overcome. For individuals who have mental health crisis, they're using music. They engage them in coloring, painting, and it's healing. It's, it's healing, and a, they're realizing when they go in the lab and they're watching the brain, how the color changes, it's like the body re release those feel-good feelings chemicals, right? The, 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 the oxytocin, all that feel-good healing ones. See, when we're stressed and our prefrontal cortex shuts down, the body thinks it has to save itself, and so it thinks you need to run and hide. And so those, those, your adrenaline kicks in and try to help you, but it's not good for you because you're really not running anywhere. And so that chemical goes all over your body and hurts your organs and your cells. And so that's why it's good to monitor. So as soon as you start feeling something, do something about it. Listen to some music, go for a walk. Go ahead, Brother Nix. I just wanted to mention when I gave the talk on divine connections, the spiritual rhythmic. Yes. We are a people who dance, sing, and that really was part of the neural art, if you will, that got us through what we got through. Yes. The, the song talked about Blue Monday, but on Saturday, we went out to play. And that helped us, and then we went to church on Sunday. That's a cultural thing with us that has kept us where we are. Yes. Because of neurons and other things. Yes. God is, God is good. God is amazing. We have it all. Like I say, I have the privilege of being on both sides, right? And so I'm, I'm there, and I'm at work, and I'm at conferences, and I'm like, we do this at church every Sunday. We have the answer. <laughs> we have the answer, right? It talks about humming, how the body itself is an instrument. So even if you're feeling stressed, and you know we all said no words, you just hum. My book, okay, in the educator sector is saying swaying, humming, regulates the body, calms the nerves, calms the heart, increase the most of the intelligence, just humming alone, swaying from side to side, rocking. And I thought about how my grandma would just be walking around humming all day, <laughs> right? And never complain, but you're like, she always had a song humming, but it makes sense. How many of us remember that? The humming, some, elders, some of our elders would walk around, they'd be humming. That was them regulating themselves dealing with the trauma and distress of what was going on, and it worked. Humming releases feel-good chemicals, rocking, swaying, right? Yes. 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 And their body released those chemicals, and it was able to help us. So thank you all so much for sharing. Um, I'm going to share a little bit from the um, Brother Quinn next. Sorry. 
All right. Oh, I wanted to share this part too. Definitely. So this is one of my, I'm an inspirational artist. For those of you who didn't know, I was an art major first and I switched to special education my junior, senior year. So this is one of my art pieces I did for um, FAU. A couple years ago, they had an art show to raise funds for the art department. So I used to be an art major there. And then I switched to special education and they invited me to participate. So this one is called Gratitude. And I just wanted to touch a little bit on this as I go into some Bible verses to close us out. Um, strategies to increase emotional intelligence continue for us, of course, as believers. Staying humble, being grateful, reverencing God, right? And Psalms 34 verse 1, King James Version says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall what? Continually be in my mouth. So that will always be my posture. That's how my mom raised me. But I'm old enough now to understand that relationship with God that's important for me myself. So this piece is called Gratitude that I did. And it's just showing, you know, reverence to God and just being grateful. And that's why many times on Sunday, if I don't have pulpit ministry duty, you will find me up there. Because that does something for me. It connects me to God. And I will never forget, I don't care how high I climb, to always reverence God, to always stay humble, and always to remain in a state of gratitude. Gratitude is also healing. If we can stay in that state of gratitude, that also releases feel-good chemicals for us in the brain. Just being grateful, finding one thing at least to be grateful for every day. So I'm gonna, this time, Brother Quinn, we're gonna go into the um, next slide. We're gonna do a few reflections before I finish with some of the Bible verses of what we can do also as believers, right? So the biblical perspective, Pastor wanted me to touch on that also. So reflecting and meditating on the word. And we do that when we come here in Bible study. We do it on Sunday when the pastor's preaching. And you can do it in your own private time. So we're going to take a look and reflect on what the word has to say about our emotions. Pastor did that last Wednesday. He did a great job also on Sunday. And I'm just going to share a few more of my favorite verses that keep me in check and remind me. Because we're all humans. And we're going to have our days, right? At some point in our journey... We all are gonna come across some type of adversity. And how do we overcome when we have those moments? By focusing on God and what his promises are in his word, right? And so another way to, to increase that is we have the tools, we have the word. And also what the research is showing and saying is that reading, writing, hearing, reading, like when we read the scriptures out loud, um, when we hear the pastor read the text to us, hearing poetry, does the same thing to the brain as walking in nature, listening to music, dancing. So years ago, way, way back in the days, with all the great intellects, they used to prescribe poetry for medicine. They did. Like song, right? We got some beautiful poetry, right? And some songs in the Bible, right? Right? So hearing the word is healing. And the Bible even told us that too. <laughs> And so I'm in study, and I'm like, wow, we do this at church every Sunday and Wednesday. So, Brother Quinn, if you can um, go ahead and my, next, my first scripture, right? Philippians 4, and if you would like to assist in reading, if somebody wants to do that, we can read it together if you want. And um, Brother Quinn, you can go ahead and put it up, the, the scriptures. We're going to start going through the scriptures now, the close out, if you don't mind. Okay, so Philippians 4, verse 6, and we could read together, because like I say, hearing out loud, because we kind of like, we have about five minutes left, so we could just do it together if you want, and we could reflect in the end, okay? Go ahead. Do not be anxious about anything, anything but in every, every situation, situation by, by prayer, prayer and petition, petition with thanksgiving, thanksgiving present, present your, your request, request to God. God. So what does the word say about being anxious, right? Having anxiety and worry. And I shared some of the most common emotions that we normally feel, right? But the word's already telling us, don't be anxious. Let's look at Matthew 6, verse 34. Therefore, it says, do not worry about what? Tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah. Right? Matthew 19, 26. So Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. 
You know those things we worry about, if they're going to work out okay or not, if it's possible for me to make it or not? The Word tells us all things are possible. 1 Peter 5, 7. But I, by your great love, can come into your house in reverence. I bow down toward your holy temple. What, correct one? The five, seven? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what does the word say about fear. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Second Timothy one verse seven. For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid but give us power, love, and self-discipline. And the next one, what does the word say about love, right? Of course, John 3, 16, we know all so well, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only, that whosoever, are we going to perish? No, we're going to have eternal life. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Proverbs 12, verse 2. Good people. Obtain favor from the Lord, but he condemned those who despise wicked schemes. And four, it says, what does the word say about joy? Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger, only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure, right? It's coming in the morning. Right? He's encouraging us. And Psalms 94, 19. Your consolation brought me joy. This is David talking to the Lord, right? Right? Yes. Thank you. Oh, God, Father, I want to give you thanks for your many blessings, God. Thank you, Lord, for those who have the ability to give tonight, God. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for those who have the ability to give tonight, Lord Jesus. And I'm asking God to bless those who weren't able to give tonight, Lord, that next time, Lord, they'll have it to give, God. Lord, I'm asking to come to bless it, God. Multiply it, Lord, as we use it towards your work, God, and to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I give you mine. Thank you. Thank you. And so, did we do Psalms 94, 19? We're almost there. Psalms 94, 19. Okay. When anxiety was great within me, your, oh yeah, your consolation brought me joy. And then to close out, focusing on the promises of God, um, we have Psalms 37, verse 4 through 5. And um, also, I have it, I'll share a couple. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. We have Matthew 5, 14. And these are all in your handouts. And as you look at these, you can reflect on them later and write, you know, what these verses mean to you. It says, you are the light of the world, right? A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything that we worry about and are concerned about, he will give it to you. And ending with Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So here ended the reading of God's holy word. Thank you for reading them out loud with me tonight. 
and for the optimistic closure on your own, you could share, um, you could write a takeaway, and at some point you can come up and tell me, or you can write it in passing. You could share. You know, it's eight eight oh one now, but at this time, um, if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, we're going to give you an opportunity to get to know Him. One of the best decisions I made over 31 years ago is to ask the Lord into my heart and to lead and guide me on my journey. And I have no regrets. So if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, at this time, we're giving you the opportunity to come forward to do, do so. If you're here tonight and you don't have a place to worship and you're looking for a church home, we also invite you to come and join us tonight. Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. Reverend Hay, would you mind coming to close us out in prayer, sir? Thank you. Sure. Just a couple of reminders uh, before we, for Reverend Hay closes out. Uh, just keep all our bereaved families in prayer. And the home going service for us, Sister Estelle Jones will be uh, Saturday at 12 o'clock. The viewing is from 11 to 12, and then the funeral is at 12 o'clock. So let's keep those families in prayer and let's come out and, and, and support them in the way that St. John do. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Continue to bless now our instructor and all of those who are present here and online. And now may God's grace, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest, rule, and abide by these your people. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let every heart say amen, amen, amen and amen. Good night, everyone. <laughs>